Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Natalie and here on my channel, you will find videos all about using technology to become the best online teacher you can be. And in today's video, I am so excited to show you how to create a memory game using Canva. Um, I am a firm believer that games are fantastic and they should be in every lesson, at least where it is easy and applicable to put in the game. By playing games, students are more engaged, they're participating, they're listening, and they're learning while having fun. They're, they're, it is awesome. It is awesome to play games in the classroom. The students love them. They're going to remember your class because you played a fun game. So let's jump into Canva and I'm gonna show you how to make a memory game so, so quickly. So let's go. Here in Canva, we're gonna need the presentation size. Um, it's just regular slide size. I just click education presentation because it quickly pre brings up that presentation slide size I need versus um, hunting for the size myself. Okay. I'm going to look for a table. So I'm going to go under elements and here are tables actually already created for me. Now I need um, just this first one works just fine and it is a memory game. So we need to make sure we have enough spaces um, for the for matches. I need an even number of cards. So I have matches and here I have four by three, so I have 12 cards. This is perfect, every card will have a match. So the first thing I wanna do is to adjust this table to fit how I want it on my slide. So it fits and that looks good. And then just quickly show you these plus buttons. If you click a table, it will add another layer for you. It added another layer. I don't need this one, but just so you know that for this first one you clicked on, you can adjust it how for however many um, layers you need. So now I have my table exactly how um, I want it, the size I need it. I'm actually going to just double click right in here and I can type into this table and you can match, create this memory game, matching game for anything you want, whatever fits your class. I am creating this for a math class, so I'm going to use a multiplication question and match it to the answer. But you can match uppercase letter to lowercase letter. You can match picture to word, picture to the word in a different language. Um, that actually adjusted my size of my box. I don't want that to happen, so we'll do 72. W whatever a memory game is so adaptable to whatever subject you teach. So I'm going to now double click somewhere else and type in my five and then I'm gonna click 70, oh, two. Okay, and bold so it matches the other one. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of my table. I have finished filling in my whole memory game um, if I, since mine is all text, if I want to add a picture just to spruce it up, I can. Or if you are matching pictures to words or whatnot, you're going to go to elements, type in a picture that you want, and then find it, and then just adjust it so it fits in just like that. And I'm... Um, let's see. We'll see all. I'm going to just do a couple of these that, that match. This is a cute smile. I'm just going to put on a couple, a couple of mine. Okay. Um, you can also do the the moving pictures too if you want and it will still move when you uncover it 
Okay, so we'll keep, we'll call that good. Now I need to cover these. Up. So on, I'm going to just click on my background. I'm going to, on my keyboard, click R and it brings up a rectangle for me. I need to adjust this rectangle to fit exactly in this spot to cover up my question. I need to, I'm going to cover all of these up, but once I do that, it's going to make it hard for students to tell you what they want. Um, you're going to get like, oh, do you want this one? Do you want this one? You're going to be pointing to all the ones <laughs> students are going to be pointing their screen. No, I want that one. I want that one. So I find it easy just to number these. So on my keyboard, I'm going to click the letter T, move that over, and I'm going to call this number one. Oh, we'll make it bigger so we can see it. There we go. Number one. There we go. And I want this centered. That looks pretty centered. Now I need to group these two images together. When I go to move this away to show what's underneath, that one, I want it to stay with it. So I'm going to click on the one, hold down shift, and then click that box. And then up here, I'm going to click group. Now when I move it, ta-da, that number moves with it which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to click control C on my keyboard and then control V. I'm just going to copy it. Look at that. My, my, my table is not the same size. Um, okay. We're just going to have to deal with that, that not being the same size. Okay. So I'm going to control copy and paste. So it fits all over those. Then I'm going to do one more and we're just going to adjust this one and see how I grouped it together. It automatically kept that one in the middle, which is what I want. And then we're going to do one more thing to help tell these apart. We're going to change the color. Okay. Now we'll do one more side and this one looks like it needs to be a little bigger. Wow. These all look the same size to me. That's funny that they are not. Okay. So now I have them all covering. I'm going to just double click because it's grouped. It's going to stay with that. Double click and change the number. It's two, three. I'm going to do this to all of them. And I'm going to have to adjust that one in just a second. Put this one and this one. Okay, so these last two numbers were bigger, so I'm going to just click on it, click ungroup, click somewhere off, and that way I can adjust this so it fits, and then I just have to group them back together. So click on that box, hold down shift, click on here, and then group. Ungroup, click off, click those numbers, adjust it. Shift, group. One more time. Ungroup. Let's adjust that. And then I'm going to group it back together. Ungroup. Okay. And then we're going to change the color because it makes it a little more fun. So I can still, it can be grouped. That's fine. I'm going to go over here, click the color, and then whatever color you want. It could be a rainbow of colors. They can all be different colors. You can make a pattern and have fun with the colors. So they really pop. Um, let's do a green one. Okay, and then we are almost ready. Oops. Almost ready to play this game. And then we'll do one more color so that way they're all different. There we go. Okay. And that is your memory game. You are ready to play it. So in a class, you're going to, you 
cannot hit this present button. If I hit this present button and present, then I cannot move these pieces. So I need to be able to move these pieces. So I'm going to share a portion of my Zoom screen. That way students are just going to see this board, not my whole Canvas screen, because that can be a lot of distractions. So um, if you need a, a if you want to know how to share a portion of your Zoom screen, be sure to check out this video right here. And then you'll be able to set yourself up to just be sharing this memory game screen with your students and not your whole, whole computer screen. Um, and that will allow you to still move these pieces. Now, after you share your screen, you're ready to play. So ask a student, pick two numbers and they're going to pick three and five. All you have to do is just move them off to the side. I keep mine right here like this. That way you can move them back. Okay, six times 10, 132. That is not a match. And then just move them back. Another thing you can do if, say, they pick two and six, not a match, then click this undo button. Boop, boop, and it will put them back for you. Um, especially if you move it off to the side, it kind of disappears and I cannot get it back, just click that undo button and you are good to go. So one and four, not a match, undo, and it will put them right back for you. Once you have all of these moved, whether you kept them to the side or not, they're all moved off your screen because students found all the matches. Before you um, close out of this, just set yourself up for success for the next time you use this by go ahead and clicking that undo button and we'll put them all back for you. Super fast. Oops, redo. There we go. And you are ready to use this game again for another class. If I were to create a, another memory game, say I want to use this multiplication um, one again, but I want to switch up the facts or I want to focus on different letters for the alphabet that I'm learning. I'm going to easily and quickly create this game again by um, duplicating this whole page. That way it is going to keep all of these numbers here for me. I don't have to create this again and then I'm just going to move them one at a time change this problem. Let's go with three times five equals, and then it hid itself. I'm going to just put it off to the side. That way I remember that I've changed this one and then I can move this another one. I'm just going to keep it off to the side so I can still, um, still grab it and then change the answer. And that is how I would create a, another memory game that I wanted to do for another class. And then after I change them all, I'm, I will just move them back. That is how you create a memory game. Um, leave a comment below. How are, let me know, how are you going to use this memory game? Are you going to use it for letters, for numbers, answer to question, term to definition? How are you going to use it? I would love to know. So please leave a comment and let me know how you, sorry, I had hiccups, how you are going to use it in your class. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.